Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today we're going to talk about choosing a tennis racket. It's a question I wrestled with myself over the years and I've helped hundreds of players, everything from the pro tour to recreational beginners, whatever, try to find better gear for their game. That's uh, one of my passions and uh, something I've tried to investigate deeply over the years. Uh, it's a very complicated topic in many ways because it's so personal. So that's why it's sometimes hard to give general advice. There are some key things you should think about. But the most important thing when you're choosing a racket is that it feels right to you, that you feel good when you're using it, that you feel confident. And one thing is you shouldn't switch around with too many rackets. If you want to focus on your tennis performance, you should try to stick with one racket. That is very important. Uh, I'm not in this situation because I'm testing rackets, it's kind of my job, so uh, I need to be switching around, but I don't prioritize my own tennis results. But if you do that, you should stick to one racket setup. Find what works for you, find what feels good, and try to just play with that and improve your game. If you're struggling, uh, which many of you do, I get these requests all the time. I've uh, temporarily removed the consultation service for a few months as I'm reworking it and trying to find a way to deal with my time, which is quite limited at being a one-man band of tennis nerd uh, so i'm trying to find a way to do that because i like helping tennis players but i also have to put a premium on my time because it's i'm trying to create content every day and so on i see many issues over and over again and uh, i think we should go through some of the typical things that show up and how you can think about them and tackle them to get a better racket but don't listen to too much advice from fellow players from guys like me maybe and uh, from uh, coaches because they might tell you oh you should play with an easy racket but you feel 100 percent at home using whatever you use uh, if you're using a frying pan a wooden racket or a pure arrow it should be what you're happy with that's very important that you're happy and believe in your choice and your setup and that you enjoy playing tennis it's all about enjoyment in the end we want to be having fun on the tennis court whether that's using a mid-size or something that will help us get huge power like a big baba 137 but if you're unhappy with your racket setup there's a process you can follow what do you want to achieve do you want better comfort more power more control improved touch better stability or more spin these are all key questions and you need to prioritize one of them at a time you can't go and say i want everything because that's the most common thing i i get from players is that i want better control, power, comfort, and stability in my racket. There's no perfect racket. When you focus on one thing, something else is gonna have to give. So you're gonna have a compromise on your hands at all times when it comes to finding the right setup. This is like everything in life. You need to compromise and you need to know what you want. And so if you're playing with a racket that feels underpowered, power might be the one thing you have to focus on. If you have tennis elbow or arm problems, you need to focus on the comfort, number one. If you're feeling like you have too much power, you're hitting out, you're making a lot of unforced errors and you blame the racket partly, it might be the racket, it's time to find a more control-oriented racket. So we have to tackle these topics one by one. My recommendation is to start with your current racket, see if there's a way to customize it or change the strings so you're more happy with it. I mean, you can add weight to the head of the racket or the handle, whatever, modify the balance and the weight and the swing weight. Or you can try a different strain to get more power, a bit more depth, uh, or increase your control. So there are things you can do to your racket to improve it. Uh, the Testing new strings, new uh, customizations, and so on. So you don't have to give up and go out and buy a racket. You can definitely try your own one first and see where that leads you. If that doesn't lead you anywhere, uh, then it's time to consider a new racket and uh, try to get three or four rackets to demo if possible maybe borrow a racket if you can't demo maybe trade rackets uh, through string forum and these types of sites there are many used rackets you can buy quite cheaply and then if you don't like them you can resell them or just keep them if they're not that expensive so there are ways around to test more rackets that's the way i've approached it but if you want to improve comfort uh, first of all if you look at the racket you should check out kind of comfort-oriented brands like Donay, Pro Kenex. The Head Gravity line is pretty comfortable. The Wilson Clash line is also very good for comfort. Those are the things you can consider when it comes to a new racket. Customization won't really help the comfort that much, but strings will. So if you go for a softer string, it could be a softer polyester if polyesters is what you like. A hybrid, meaning a multi-filament or a synthetic gut and a polyester string 
or even going to a multi-filament gut full bed. So you can actually try all these things to change the strings. You can also reduce the string tension. A lower string tension will make the string bed softer, will actually help the polyester string work a bit better. It will move a bit more and but snap back into place like polys do. So I, I think it's a good idea to try a lower tension and you should do it gradually, maybe drop a few pounds here and there and see if it works for you. But um, lower tension, different string will make your racket more comfortable for sure. So uh, give that a go before you consider a new racket. If you want power depth, you can try customizing a racket by adding weight to the head. This will increase the swing weight and make the racket more powerful. A higher swing weight gives the racket more power. So for example, you can add weight at 12 o'clock for the biggest increase in a swing weight, or you can add it at three and nine uh, for a little bit of a moderate increase in swing weight. It depends on what you like. You need to experiment a bit, but this will increase the power level. You can also check your strings. Maybe you can drop the tension a bit, a few pounds or kilos. That should open up some free depth on your shots. Sometimes it might become too much of a trampoline and you can't control it. So you need to do it gradually and see where you are. A string like a gut or a multifilament also offers better power overall. So you can also do that to see if you can get more power from the string setup. When it comes to rackets, the things you should look for when you're looking for more power is to get a racket with a higher stiffness rating measured in RA. So a higher stiffness rating than what you have. Uh, usually in the 60s, 65 and upwards, usually for more power. The one way to tell the stiffness is to see how thick the beam is. That's generally the case, not in all cases, but a thick beam usually results in more power. Also, the racket head size, a bigger head size will give you more of a trampoline and should give you more power. So bigger head size and thicker beam, higher stiffness are all things that result in a more powerful stroke generally. So uh, check that out if you want more power from your, your racket. If you want control, you should look for a racket that has a smaller head size, a tighter string bed like an 1820, thinner beam profile should be more flexible as a response. You can also string your uh, racket with a more control oriented polyester, a stiffer polyester string. You can check stiffness ratings at Tennis Warehouse University. They have this string comparison tool that I've talked about before. So you can try a, a stiffer string. If you're playing with a multifilament, maybe it's time to go up to a polyester string and see if you can do anything there with the strings. Uh, there's not really any way to customize a racket to giving yourself more control, but the string should be able to help you quite a bit. And if the string doesn't work, you, should have, you have to look for a racket. For stability, you can obviously customize a racket by adding weight to the head. That's going to increase the stability of the frame, also make it more powerful. In this case, you can have, for example, add some weight at three and nine or 12 just to get a bit more mass in the head that will improve the stability. Also, you can get a bigger head size racket that's going to lead to more stability, more real estate to hit the ball, which increases the stability overall of the frame. So bigger head size or more mass, that should be key things you're looking for when you want a stable racket. All right, so I forgot the spin section, which is important to some of you. So when it comes to rackets, look for a racket with an aerodynamic design, helping the racket travel easier on the vertical plane, like a windshield wiper motion. That's the modern way of swinging the frame. You can look at Bubble of Arrow, Head Extreme, Dunlop SX, the Wilson Clash, pretty spin friendly, Yonex V Core, Prince Ripstick, to name a few spin friendly rackets. Also, a more open string pattern will allow for more string movement, which will increase your spin potential. When it comes to strings, if you're playing with plenty of top spin, you'd want obviously to use a polyester string of some kind to get snap back where the strings move and then snap back into place. It's hard to say whether shaped or twisted polys offer better spin potential than round ones. That's a debated topic. Some strings have a coating on them to help the strings move more. The movement is the important part. The downside of those strings is that once the coating wears off, the string won't have the same properties anymore. So those are some things around spin to consider. For touch, that's the thing it's so hard to quantify and measure. Touch for some players can be something completely different for other players. There is a case that many rackets today are more muted. They have more dampening materials because they're generally stiffer. So more old school rackets are generally a little bit more focused on feel of the frame. Uh, but uh, there's all kinds. So there's good feeling rackets today as well. So this is something you just have to experiment with. It depends really on what you like. Some players love a really stiff string bed where you have a high tension and a stiff 
polyester string that creates kind of like a board-like feel and some players love a flexible racket that really bends on impact and where you feel the ball really sink into the string bed. So it all depends on what works for your game. So the touch part is the most personal one and the one you need to kind of test the frames and see where you are on the scale. So that's pretty much it. Those are some typical problems that you can solve uh, pretty easily. I hope you found that useful. And so when you're looking for a new racket, ask yourself, what is the most important thing I need to get from the new racket? Using this kind of method, you can then identify whether you can customize the one you have to play more like what you want or whether you should go, go for a new racket. And my uh, goal is to create content where you actually will be able to identify at least the three or four most suitable rackets for you to demo so that you can go deeper into the process and get closer to the racket you want. That's always been the main purpose of my consultation is to give players the right type of options because you always have to give options. I can't say just after talking to a player or watching him play, this is the racket you should use. It's all about getting narrowing down the selection so then you can test the rackets and see what feels right. Then you can find the right one for you. And then that's what you should focus on and uh, improve your tennis. That's the general advice I can give if your goal is to improve your tennis and your tennis results. That's it for this one, a long one. I hope you found it useful. If you do, please join Patreon, patreon.com slash tennis nerd, or buy something through my affiliates. The links are in the description. I get a small commission if you do at no extra cost to you. Please also subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. Have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis.